This is Absolute Genius. So sit down, buckle up, and get ready for takeoff. Each show will introduce you to a different genius. An amazing person who had a genius idea which shaped the world. And they will inspire us to come up with our own genius idea at the end of each show. But will it be any good? Will it be any good? It'll be absolute genius. And on today's show, a genius engineer who solved a stinker of a problem. <laughs> Prepare to be blown away by his brilliance. Today, we're going to introduce you to an amazing man who came up with a genius solution. <laughs> <clears throat> to a very witty problem. <clears throat> I'd leave it up for a minute if I were you. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks to him, whatever was uh, in there is now gone, and we don't have to worry about where it is. Mm. Just leave it to today's genius, who invented London's first giant sewer system. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Sir Joseph Bazalgette. <laughs> mind, I'm rather busy. Inspired by his genius idea, we'll be coming up with our own later on using the power of poo. Yeah, uh, but now let's find out more about the man himself and the uh, humming problem that he solved. <coughs> Joseph. <coughs> Have you ever wondered what happens when you flush the loo? All the waste that goes down your toilet ends up underground in the sewer, where it's safely carried away. But more than 150 years ago in London, there was nowhere for raw sewage to go. So it was dumped straight in the River Thames. And in the hot summer of 1858, the smell became unbearable. It was called the Great Stink. To demonstrate, we've enlisted the help of the closest thing we can find to a poo machine. It's Hepworth the cow and a few of her friends. Ah, it's still warm. We're recreating the River Thames in Victorian ah, London. You that, you do. Hey, up. Cow pack. Thank you, Hepworth. So, if you get queasy, look away now. Get that out of some water. A bit of decorum, boys. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Right, this more. represents the poo produced by two and a half million Londoners. Look! <laughs> That's <laughs> flying on my trousers! <laughs> Let's recreate the moment to see what the river would have looked like back in the day. Right, see if it flows. There you go. Oh, <laughs> someone had a bad night there, look. Somewhere in East London. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to live there? Look at it! It wouldn't be nice, would it? Right, what are we going to do about my trousers? Uh, take him off. Come on, I'll tell them dry. So that was the great stinky summer of 1858. Stick your hooter in there. That. Stick it. <laughs> Imagine if London still hummed like that. Would it put off the tourists? We've recreated the smell to find out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that smells of? I don't know. It smells bad. Bad, yes. <laughs> would you have come to this city if it smelt like that? No. No, right. <laughs> do you know why? Neither, neither would I. Because that is the smell of human poo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly! <laughs> right. Do you want to add a little uh, sticky nose in? But it was no laughing matter. People were getting sick and dying. At first they blamed the smell, but disease was actually being spread by harmful bacteria leaking from the river into people's drinking water. To find out more about the bacteria in poo, we've come to the University of Reading. To meet genius helper, Dr Gemma Walton. <laughs> it's a 
a bit whiffy in here. There's a lots of brown jars with bubbling. Stuff. Hello, Gemma. Don't know whether I should be shaking your you hand, can but at the moment. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, all right. Gemma is a gut microbiologist. She's recreated part of the digestive system to study the good and bad bacteria inside us. And yes, before you ask, that brown stuff is what you think it is. So can you tell from your own poo how healthy you are? So in terms of how healthy you are, you'd have to look more specifically at the bacteria there. But um, one thing that doctors do actually use is a Bristol stools chart. Now, this is a list of types of poo in terms of consistency. <laughs> here's, your, here's your menu for today, sir. Yeah, Would you are. like uh, type six, which is your fluffy pieces with, with ragged edges and mushy stools? Type six. Like a sausage, but with cracks on its surface. Ouch. <laughs> oh, dear. Settle down, boys. How much bacteria is there in our poo? So, a stool sample can be anywhere typically from 30 to 60 per cent bacteria. So, there's lots and lots of bacteria in the stool sample. We want to examine our own stool to see the bacteria inside. Well, not ours. Someone lent us one. Yeah, we, I think we should give a, uh, a name to our, uh, our, our donator. Do you? What would you like to call it? Uh, Steve. Steve. All right. Just pick up Steve's sample. Steve. <laughs> Steve's not been very well. <laughs> so just take a small amount. Some bacteria in poo is harmful, so we're wearing protective gear. Examining your own stools at home is not recommended. First, we're heating our poo sample to kill the bacteria. Yeah, get it? Mm. How's Steve smelling? You want to pop a few drops all pop over. Oh, 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 oh. Then we're staining it with special dye. Once it's dry, we can have a look at it under a microscope and see the bacteria. Mm. Right, let's see how much bacteria Steve's sample has on it. So, uh, what am I...? Yeah. yeah. All these little shapes that you see here oh, are okay. bacteria. Human waste contains billions of bacteria. That's why we wash our hands after going to the loo. But in Victorian times, people were washing in and drinking dirty water contaminated by sewage. If you had a case of diarrhoea, you've got a good sewage system and hand washing facilities, so you can keep it pretty well contained. However, if you were in a situation where sewage was actually getting into the water system and people with diarrhoea, etc., weren't being able to contain it, you're actually getting bacteria that cause diarrhoea going into your drinking water, which can undoubtedly cause further cases of it. And also, the only thing you've got to rehydrate yourself with is water that's contaminated with bacteria that cause diarrhoea. You're in a bit of a tricky situation. People had been putting up with the stench and disease for long enough. The great stink was the final straw. London needed the help of a genius. Enter Joseph Bazalgette, London's chief engineer, with a background in building railways. Parliament gave him the job of solving London's sewage nightmare, and what he came up with was a genius piece of engineering. Bazalgette's genius idea was to build a system of big sewage pipes to catch London's waste before it flowed into the river and London's drinking water. The sewage was then carried eastwards and pumped out to sea. No more stink. Genius! Inspired by Basil Jet's genius idea, we'll be coming up with our own later on. But right now, we're here at London's glittering Leicester Square. We're not going to be going to a premiere, no. No, no, we're going underground into the sewer. Not many people get to go inside Bazalgette sewers, so this is a real treat. And to guide us... It's genius helper Rob Smith, a flusher for Thames Water. His job is to keep London sewers flowing. It's amazing to think that this huge network of tunnels is right underneath Leicester Square. <laughs> OK, I can't even describe the smell in here. It's a little bit soft underfoot, isn't it? It's really soft there. Why did we wind oh! up? Why did we wind up? <laughs> <laughs>
This vapour in the air, this is a very fine mist in the air, what is that? That is a mixture of good old English rainwater and a bit of sewage, <laughs> but not too much. It was the biggest sewer system the world had ever seen. London finally had somewhere to dump its smelly waste, and disease spread through sewage started to disappear. Anything that goes down the toilet or plug hole ends up here. From loo paper to cooking fat. It's the job of Rob and his team to clear any nasty blockages by hand. We're supposed to be helping, but the tunnels are flooded with rainwater. Rob thinks it's too dangerous to go any further. Right, the task was going to be that you were going to be digging out and removing fat. But that's been done by natural means because the rainfall that we've had has actually flushed the fat away. What it has done is it's left a couple of bits of pieces on the rails down there. So who's the mountaineer? Well, neither of us, but he looks who's... like he's just about to throw up. Yeah, he so it'll have to be me. Right, now, I'm not saying he's faking it, but seconds after I volunteered, look at him. Is that what he's getting rid of? Yeah. Oh, my. Oh! This is about the moment where he falls in. Hold on to the rail, yeah? Hold on, hold on to the rail, stand sideways, face the wall. That's it, right. What is it? Right. That's a pair of pants. Pants? That's the elastic from the top of someone's pants. Oh, mate, it looks disgusting. He's wretched. Come on. <laughs> he wants to have a go. I know, I know, I can see. He's really sweet. <laughs> yeah. That's the other one for it, yeah? And so on and so forth. It's crab like, yeah? It's disgusting. The flushes have to do this kind of nasty work every day. Without them, Basil Jet sewers would clog up. Straight down? Yeah, straight down. Is this Basil Jet's exact design? Yeah. Okay. Why did he make it so big? It's what you call forward planning. It's what you call a... Uh, well, he was a genius. He was a genius? He was a genius. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He looked ahead. He didn't build for tomorrow, he built for 150 years' time. That's, uh, that's yeah. a... That's a clever guy, yeah. yeah. Right, should we get out of here? Yes, please. Go for a shower. Yeah, then the water will end up here. Bazalgette predicted the population would grow, so he designed his sewer tunnels big enough to cope. Good job, because there are three times as many people living in London now. And breathe. Oh, London air has never smelled so good. I tell you what, I've got an absolute newfound respect for the guys that work here doing that. It's an amazing job, and they were really. Oh, well, cheers then, Rob. Thanks very Pleasure. much. Pleasure, uh, lad. Glad you liked my tunnels, boys. Now go and get washed. But there was a time when we didn't have any sewers at all, and people had to store their muck at home. Imagine that. Yes, it's time for the not so genius idea. In medieval times, toilet waste dropped straight into chambers called cesspits. But you had to be careful, even if you were an expert. In 1326, Richard, a muckraker, the person who went around clearing up other people's filth, fell through his own rotten floorboards into the cesspit below and drowned in his own poo. Ah, a not-so-genius way to go to the loo. We've been inside Bazalgette's genius sewer and discovered things that once went down a toilet. That's the elastic from the top of someone's pants. But where does it all go? Meet genius helper Nick Mills from Reading Sewage Works. What does this machine do? This removes anything that floats in the sewage that comes into the works. Wet wipes, pants, like pants, pants yeah. yeah. Can we have a look? You can have a look, guys, have a look. Don't get too close. So, in essence, it's just a big sim, really, yeah? That's, that's absolutely right, yeah. <laughs> the smell is absolutely... You... What's that? And then where does the, like, water go next? That goes on to the next stage of the process, which I'm going to take to you now. Okay. Well, then. 
Oh, what is this place? And here we, we settle out the solids that are in the wastewater. And the clean water wears over the top and goes on. This is the worst smell we've had so far. Why, why is it so bad in here? Well, what we're doing here, we're starting to concentrate the solids, and we call it sludge. And uh, that has quite a strong odour. Been caught many things along this journey. The stools, sludge. Look at it. Once the solids have been filtered out, the water's treated so it's clean enough to go back into the river. All that harmful bacteria has gone. But what happens to the sludge left behind? What's inside these big fat space eggs? Inside these digesters is sludge. OK, and so then what happens to the sludge inside here? So sludge spends about 15 days in here with uh, a number of different bacteria that eat away at the sludge and produce a biogas that's full of methane. We use that in engines to generate electricity and heat. Ah, like a reusable energy. Uh, poo's got power, though. Poo power. Really, yeah. Absolutely, it certainly has. So the poo from Bazaljet sewers is a useful source of energy. Better out than in. <laughs> Oh, We're going here. to make our own methane, turning poo into energy. From sludge like this, you get methane. So while we make some gas, here are some facts about CAC. The Genius Top 5. At 5, the world's most expensive coffee drink is made from coffee beans eaten <laughs> and pooed out by civic cats. The digestive process improves the taste. I think I'll stick to tea. At four, your body finds it hard to digest sweet corn kernels. That's why sometimes they turn up in the loo. At three, Cheryl Cole's cat smells of strawberries. No, it doesn't. Even Cheryl has to go to the bog. And everyone's poo contains honking bacteria. At two, humans are naturally programmed to hate the smell of poo. So we don't touch it and end up sick from the bacteria inside. <laughs> And at one, penguin poo can be seen from space. Their droppings show up as dark stains on satellite images from Antarctica. The dirty flappy flappers! So then, Nick, this is a condensed version of what we saw outside, the uh, big fat space eggs, right? That's absolutely right. So you can see the sludge. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're gonna get you to feed them, because they're hungry at the moment, and they're going to produce more biogas, the bacteria, that is, and actually go down this tube and bubble up through into these where we can collect it. 16 years of television fed poo before. That's, uh, what do you feed it with? We feed it with a sludge that you've just seen on site. Feed poo with poo. <laughs> so, don't so how do we know when methane's been produced? It's going to bubble up into this column here and displace the water so we can measure how much we've produced. Ah, so it looked like when you let one go in the bath? Yeah, we've just got this cylinder on top. All right. Choose your colour. Well, yellow. You like yellow, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. Well, I'll have blue then. So that we don't forget, here's a... Uh... So I'll leave you guys to feed the digesters. Mm. All right. Sounds good. Get the shovels. Oh, you give me a stir. God, I'm going in. The bacteria in the digesters will eat the sludge we're feeding them. Do you have ever thought this is where yours could end up? In an experiment like this? In the process, they'll naturally release gases full of methane energy. It's called anaerobic digestion. It works best when it's in a kind of warm environment, about 40 degrees Celsius. Sludge and the bacteria loving the heat. That's a bit. Can I borrow your poo poker? <laughs> Just please. <laughs> right, the bung is in the bung hole. Let's switch on the mixers and let it ferment. Right, got 30 minutes. Time's up. Now all we can do is wait. And wait. Don't mess about with it. 15 minutes left! Each time a bit of gas is released, it bubbles up into the glass columns. 10 minutes left. Pushing the liquid down. 5 minutes left! <laughs> the less liquid, the more gas. 3, 2, 1... I've won. Mine's definitely lower. No, I've won. No, a little bit less. I've won. Nick, come here. Expert opinion. Who's won? Right, let's have a look. I can see from this that Dick has produced more gas. Oh, <laughs> no. See, I'll put in more sludge. You always do produce more gas, anyway. True, true. Uh, so, right, we saw the uh, gas bubbling through the water up into the tube. It's still there, but what is it? 
So the biogas is mostly made up of methane, 65%. OK, and what's the deal with methane? Well, methane is an explosive gas, and it's also full of energy, obviously. Mm. Did you say explosive? <laughs> This methane gas being explosive sounds good, doesn't it? It does sound good, it does, but I want to be able to, I want to see the energy, I want to see it. Mm. Oh. If only Fran, our genius scientist, was here to tell us more. Yeah. Mm. Hey, hey. Our genius scientist Fran can explain things in a way even we can understand. She loves a good experiment and always pops up when you need her most. Hi. Hi. So I thought, let's see the energy in methane, mm. right? So I've got a balloon of methane here yes. and some soapy water. Mm. So I thought, let's bubble the methane through the soapy water and we'll get bubbles that are full of methane. Farty ah. bubbles. Exactly. Right. And what I'm going to do is set fire to these bubbles so we'll mm. see the energy. Yeah. And I thought, why don't we set fire to them in your hand, Dick? It's a good idea. Yeah. Of, course, of course you did, Frank. Yeah. So... Fran's an expert. This is not something to be messed with at home. So get a nice big handful of those. Why is it always me? OK, let's just set fire to them. Yeah. So, three, two... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you OK, then? Well, it was quite... Look at me arm here! <laughs> Look what you've done to me arm here! <laughs> Took me 36 years to grab that! <laughs> So there, you could see the energy being released from methane with the flame, and you could feel the heat a little bit. Uh, I mean, that, that, that was good, but what we want is kind of more of a, you know, an explosion. Power flow, yeah. We heard it's explosive. Ah, well, the thing is, to make methane explosive, you've got to add oxygen. Right. You got any um, oxygen? Just so happens I have. Ah, good. Over here, I've got a balloon, a very small balloon of oxygen, and another balloon of methane. Dick's friend. Yeah. So I'm going to bubble these through the soapy water again. Right, so it's going to go bang in there, is it? Well, I was thinking, why why don't we just do the same as before and you scoop them up and we set fire to them in your hand? It's a nice idea. Why not? <laughs> that's it, that's it. Three, ah! two, <laughs> one. Ah! <laughs> it was brilliant, Fran, but the thing is, we want to see this power of poo on an even bigger scale. Massive. Ah, I can imagine you do. Well, if I was to do that, I think I would need to go to a big open field. I love big open fields. <laughs> We've been on a whiffy adventure, examining the stinky stuff running through Basil Jet's genius sewer. That's the elastic from the top of someone's pants. And we've met genius helpers who've made power from the poo in his sewers. Methane power. We're ready to reveal our own genius idea. Ha, genius idea to demonstrate the power of poo on a big scale. Our challenge, to build the average household out of cardboard boxes. Calculate the methane they produced from five days of poo, then ignite it and let rip. I hope you're ready. Yes. I hope you're ready, because yes. this is going to be explosive. But first, we need to work out how much methane is produced by a typical family. Watch and learn, children. Different on math lesson. Yes. The average person's poo from one day will give us 13.5 litres of methane. Times that by that. That first, yes. Clever Six, boy. Clever seven. boy. Times Six, that by five days and 2.4, the number of people in the average household. What's he talking about? Three, two. Wait a minute, no! Times five Just is... I refuse to do... I no. know! See? There's the answer. And that's a lot of gas. So it's 162 litres of methane. Yep, that's right. It says it there. Time to call in our genius helper. It's Mark Turner, special effects whiz and explosives expert. The last time we saw this man, he locked Dick in a cage next to almost a million volts of electricity. So what can we do with 162 litres of methane? I reckon <laughs> 10 boxes will sort you out. All right. What I'd like you to do is to make them up, tape the bottoms down. I'll go and prep the balloons for these boxes. I'll see you in a bit. OK, so we just need to put the boxes together. What right. is that? That's a tank. There you go. What? Yep. Seal. Yeah, that's me. 2.4 dick and dogs. <laughs> 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 
got my man, Daddy. Yeah. I think we need a point four, don't we? We mark. <laughs> Look at that! Brilliant! Look at the family, everyone. And there you have it, the average family household, 2.4, Daddy Dick, Mummy Dom and little baby Mark. Now, should we go and produce some methane? Yes. Come on. Or, in fact, to save time, let's use some Mark produced earlier. 162 litres of it. How many do you put in per box? One per box. Oh, oh only one. one. Little oh, Mark. Oh, it's me! <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get them into position. Mark, would you like to take yourself? I will. Yeah. Finally, we're ready for the genius idea. In this very quiet field, we're about to make a very big bang using the power of poo. And we're all set. The typical British household is there, ready and waiting. Yeah, and, and you, you, Buzzlejet, you've got front row seats to watch our genius idea, methane explosion. And all of this is to, to celebrate what a genius you are for inventing the, the London sewer system. Yes, thank you, Buzzlejet, for helping us to collect the poo which creates the methane, which will help all of this family go bang. Mm. Actually, thinking of that, you might need these in your ears and your mouth open. Good lad. Right, Mark, we're ready. Standing by. Three, two, one. <laughs> it went right through me. Look what it did to Basil Jack. That's what oh, my back. Mark's head's intact. It blew his head off. Mark's torso. Looks like uh, me and you are in uh, a thousand pieces, mate. Oxygen literally blew it to bits. We've seen the genius of Sir Joseph Bazalgette for ourselves and been inspired by his sewage. And we've transformed Whoa. human waste into ah! energy. <laughs> Explosive methane energy. Who'd have thought poo could be so powerful? So there you are, that's what the gas from your poo can do. Yeah, you think your dad or grandpa can do a ripper? Ha ha ha! That was a ripper! It certainly was. Basil Jet, you are an absolute genius. Thank you, boys. Don't oh, wobble it. I'm not doing anything. Just stand still, then. Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs>